Comme, comme le Victoria presque, t'as vu Oui, c'est... Oh là là Tout tenté au... Ah ouais Tout tenté au... Tout tenté au... C'est un Tilantia à, à très très longue feuille celui-là. Tu sais qu'il y a plein de formes, hein, tu t'en doutes, vu, vu la répartition de l'espèce. Celui-là, il est très très long, il est très déjà grandé. Finally, I see on this vertical limestone cliff this plant which is usually invasive in many countries in Asia, for instance, on the limestone and also on all the temples. Uh, this is a Tradescantia spatacea, and we see it in its original habitat in Central America, especially Mexico and Guatemala, growing on vertical cliffs. So this form is a form we know in cultivation with the lower leaf surface purple, but some forms also are totally green. But it's a good thing to see that actually it's living exactly in the same habitat as the, when it's invasive. On, on vertical garden, it's a very, very good plant.
here in the Central America, in Guatemala, where we are, it's really the kingdom of the genus Camidorea among the pugs. There are more than 40 species of Camidorea, from the smallest like uh, Camidorea turcami, also some are climbing, and many are erect, sometimes like this, with it yeah, has clusters with many stems growing together. Some others have only one stem. So it's very, very diversified. And this is very different from what we can see in South America. Everywhere we can see them. We are in the Maya site of Aguateca, so totally surrounded by water. And uh, we have seen so palaces and uh, different types of uh, habitations. Uh, and uh, also, of course, the forest is around, there are canyons. And uh, here we see a big patch of uh, a small Camedoria species. This one has fruits, hanging spadices with a small black fruits and red rachile. It's growing as solitary stems, but it's a clutch. A begonia, maybe the group of begonia resinifolia, which has young, quite brown leaves. And then, when older, they are totally green. Quand tu as vu le, la merveille, ouais, c'est incroyable. Wow. Oh là là, t'en as pas. Oh là là, c'est comme un snack. Oui, ça ressemble à un snack. C'est incroyable. Ça ressemble à une poulevre. C'est la poulevre. Attends, mais c'est quelle folie. C'est crazy. C'est crazy. Il est en front, l'autre, il est en holding. Il y a juste un hang ici. No, 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 no,
It's uh, the Rivea, member of the Covalvulace, and it's uh, very famous because it's uh, a very strong hallucinogenic substance in the seeds. And it was used a lot, and especially by Maya people. Uh, they did uh, give the substance to the people to be sacrificed in order to be easier the way to be killed. Big liana, but so it has uh, the bark is squirming. It's one thing, but what is strange is all these protuberances, which look like a bulbil, but it seems it's not bulbils at all. I don't think it's for vegetative propagation. So there were flowers before because when I look at this, maybe it could be inflorescence axis. So maybe it was a flowering part of the liana. This costus probably remains a small species, we don't see inflorescences, but according to the growth habit, because already many stems, all the same size, probably it remains a small species. Climbers are spiny, but this one is very interesting because when I see the leaf on the two tendrils on each side of the leaf sheath, I know it is a smilax. And usually, smilax have much narrower stems, usually only two, five millimeters. But this one is a huge species of smilax emerging from the ground. It has Maybe something like a big tuber, actually, because I see one stem here. Just at the surface of the soil, strange structures, which are not stones, but obviously vegetal structures. So we see the stem of the Smilax emerging from the base of this structure. Here also we see a bigger one. It's probably mostly ligneus. It seems that local people use for different medicine value. So this is a dominant species of palm in this forest at Las Guacamayas and it is spiny all along the trunk but when we look more carefully actually we see that the spines are roots because they are branched in different directions when we go downwards 
we see actually it's a little bit like a tree fern. All these roots have more and more ramifications. Finally, they create uh, this uh, totally embracing structure similar to the one we can see in tree ferns. Probably very effective for the protection. When we see that there are so many <laughs> individuals of this palm, it seems efficient. Selenicellus testudo. This bromeliad is uh, obviously of the Ekmer group. I say that due to the teeth along the leaves and also the structure of the inflorescence, inflorescence here. All this falling now, but we see that there are some new shoots at the base because. The end of the stem is flowering and after there are some lateral shoots growing, but this one has been falling, but surviving. In this forest, periodically inundated, now it's a dry season, but we are just about 50 centimeters above the water level. And uh, there are many trees. We see the very beautiful fluted trunk of a member of the Fabaceae. Uh, we see a very beautiful climbing member of uh, Sapindaceae, either Serjania. Here we see also a climbing fern, very elegant, more or less suppressed leaves, which are a little bit blue iridescent. We see very beautiful epiphytic uh, uh, bromeliads, of course, uh, different Echmea species. So it's, uh, it's not so rich, but it's very well, uh, well working. Uh, so we can continue now. Is an orchid? Yes, yeah, it's a small orchid, totally covered with flowers close to this ecmea with terrible spines. La frégate, il y a du bon temps pour les pirates tant que la mer est par dessous. C'est le corsaire qui tient le bon bout. Pour la reine et le roi, tant mieux si tu deviens corsaire. Jésus était hors la loi. Viens donc fréquenter les étoiles, dormir dans le ventre des voiles. Oh, un ardisia. C'est un ardisia, maybe. Maybe it's an ardisia. Peperomia species growing on its branch. 
with the spaddy seeds, the acanths, which are sticky and tiny seeds. It's not seeds actually, it's a small dry fruit, but sticky and dispersed by animals on the legs of birds and feathers. And here we see the babies germinating here among the mosses because these tiny acanths can germinate only in very open places, not covered by litter. Non, mais il y a tout un petit jardin là avec des. <rire> ah oui. Des perronnes orchids. Many orchids. Oh, ils sont small. Very small. Yeah. So tiny orchids. Another epiphytic cactus. We have seen, of course, different Ripsali species. We have seen the very strange Selenicereus testudo, which is totally oppressed to the trunks and which is a spiny, which has triangular stems. And this one is actually a little bit more common all over South tropical America. It's Epiphyllum philanthus, also night blooming, like many of these epiphytic cacti. And, uh, but this one is a very big individual, so hanging down branches. Of course, the very strange one is the Seleni Cereus testudo, which is totally clinging the trees. Here we see a few things in the forest understory, but everything is on the branches. So we see all the bromeliads, orchids, many, so many orchids, the peperomia and the cacti. So the life here is not really in the canopy, but in the trunks and branches above the soil. The emergent tuber, probably it's a smilax, but they say that due to the structure of the base of these leaves, which act like spines, the base of the peciole looks like a smilax. It does in sacred shows. Maybe it's not a smilax. Actually. Yes, yes. Now here we can see the leaves, and according to the leaf shape on the Nervé venation, it looks much more like Dioscoria than smilax. And the tuberous base is more in relation, usually, with uh, Dioscoria. And uh, it's interesting because we see exactly the place where the peciole will be shedding the abscission layer, it will remain this part which will act like a spine fixing the stem, allowing it to climb among other plants. And all this part, the upper part of the peciole and the leaf itself will be shedding.
very efficient to climb because we see that the tendril with the three part at the end finishes like my nails very efficient to climb because we see when fixing on mosses so it can climb all along the trunk like this here we see uh, climbing along the trunk. Uh, it's quite common philodendron. It's a philodendron radiatum, but uh, this one in this area has a very narrow, narrow lobes uh, of uh, the leaf, uh, and it's a uh, very elegant. Here we see the gross habit of the philodendron radiatum. We see, of course. All the adventitious roots fixing the plant to the trunk and we see that uh, it begins as a climber and finally it becomes an epiphytic species or even if it has some traumatism, no problem at all, it continues its growth along the trunk. And on this ridge we see a lot of uh, this uh, bird nest uh, anterior covering all uh, the cliff, it's a limestone, of course, it's a karst hill and a rosetted anterior covering all the surface. Here we see a quite a huge species of a spatifilum in the Arase family. And uh, I'm a little bit surprised because usually spatifilum are growing very close to water, uh, either partly submerged or, uh, or sometimes uh, just uh, along the banks, but always in very humid places. But this species, not at all in an inundated place, it's on the kind of hill of a rift, so it's uh, not usual habitat for spatphilum. The Saxicolos bird nest anterior, which has a huge old part of the stem and the roots are still growing in this very thick structure. Actually it's not the stem which is thick, the roots are growing in the, all the humus accumulated in 
de Rosette of the Leaves. Oh, Begonia de milieu sec, c'est toujours oui. étonnant. Oui. It's very strange to see a Begonia growing with a agave, a reo, so it's a, a place which becomes very dry during the dry season. And the, we see that the leaves begin to become a little bit dehydrated, so probably it will be remaining only the stems during the dry season. See that this uh, camidora is not simply clumped, but uh, it's incredible to see that all the stems are so tightly growing together. So it's uh, much more tighty than in bamboos. So it's very surprising about the root system, how the roots can grow when the new stem arrives in the center. It's very, very strange. We can see how the trees are maintaining all the walls on this acropole. And uh, of course, uh, renovation is a little bit difficult because once you cut the trees, the roots are dehydrated, so the stones are no longer fixed and the walls can fall. So as soon as the trees are removed, it has to be immediately restored, otherwise it becomes destroyed. Here on uh, the foot of uh, this uh, temple in uh, Tikal, so we see this uh, green form of uh, Tradescantia spartacea. It's uh, here we have both the purple, usual purple, and the green growing everywhere. And also somebody else. We see here the leaves of a begonia, and this begonia actually is totally covering the almost vertical slope. And we see that it has a very strong stem and probably it loses all the leaves during the dry season. Now is the beginning of the dry season, but probably 
in March, April, it loses the leaves and has only the remaining erect stems. But the reo, it will keep the leaves even during the dry season. Here we are in the south of uh, Petén, in uh, around Flores, along the beautiful lake. And here's in the same way as in uh, Tikal Ruins or different places, I see this very beautiful Passiflora. I didn't think at the beginning it was Passiflora coriacea, but I didn't think that the leaves were a little bit strange compared to what I did know from Passiflora coriacea. Finally, while checking on the with the help of a friend, Tomai Vermans. Uh, actually, it's not Passiflora coriacea, but a newly described species since about 20 years with a very difficult name, Passiflora chicksots. Chicksots, <laughs> it's a <laughs> very special name. Actually, it's a apposition, it's not at all Latin nor even Latina. Apposition name, it means bat in Maya language. Mm. So, of course, we see that the shape of the blade is really like a bat. So, Passiflora chicksots, which is a small species climbing. I should like to see the flowers because the flowers are small, but they seem to be beautiful but maybe we'll never see them. juvenile form of a Sangonium, the group of Sangonium podophyllum, but maybe another species. And we see these individuals keep the white markings quite a long time, but this one, which has the same size, is totally green. So really, there are differences between the individuals according to the markings on the leaves.
Here we see a climbing member of the Comelinaceae. We see the stem climbing around the stem of the Dioscorea. And what is very interesting is that we see on this leafy plagiotropic lateral shoot, we see the flowers. But when I see the growth habit on the flowers, I see it's a member of the genus Dicorizandra. But I'm very surprised because the petals usually in the Dicorizandra are bluish or pinkish. But in this case, they are bright white, very bright white, and also they are quite thick. And usually in Dicorizandra, petals are very, very thin. And also, we see the mix of the yellow parts and white parts among the staminal. And so I think actually that the stamens have two parts, a yellow one and a white one. But maybe the white part also could be the filiform structure of the stigma. So I think it's hairs along the fillet of the stamens and they see also the yellow stamens, but it's a very showy climbing decorizandra. It was a tree fall, and after the tree was cut in many parts uh, along the trail, but what is interesting, we see the famous Selenicereus testudo, but what's interesting in this case is that we see that it was a part of trunk here, and we see the cactus, so one face of the stem is totally oppressed to the back of the trunk, and we see the adventitious roots fixing the cactus to the bark of the trunk. So it's a... Uh, oh yes, I can even take it. Uh, a big, it's really a huge, a huge cactus. Uh, and... Uh, oh, well, we see very well. Wow. Actually, it's a tree, and I don't know <laughs> myself uh, what, what it could be, but it's a very particular about the trunk, multi trunk, but are also partly adhering together, uh, and uh, anastomosing more or less. Hopefully, I did see the name. It's uh, the famous uh, Compesh wood, Hematoxylum Compeshanum. And here, this forest is uh, probably inundated during the rainy season because uh, we see that uh, the soil is very hydromorphic soil yes i see the, the leaves of the hematoxylum it's uh, very very small leaves actually leaflets because it's a member of fabaceae and it's a compound leaves on each little element is a leaflet.
avant-dernier matin. Flores. El importador llega a esta feria escolar desde el 